Hello, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your first Cordis project. So, once you start Cordis, you're going to see a window much like this. There'll be Project Navigator on the left, IP Catalog on the right, Messages on the bottom, and a little window over here for you to see the status of your compilation. Now, intro out of the way, let's get started. First, you're going to want to click on this New Project Wizard right here, or click on File, New Project Wizard. Then you're going to want to head, uh, go ahead and choose where you want to make this. So here I'm just going to call this tutorial. I'm going to select this folder and then go ahead and just name your project the same name as your folder. Click next. You want to select empty project. Skip this screen. And then for this class we have a max 10 device and our name of our device is going to be this string right here. So I'll let you guys pause it and then copy that down so you guys know what to type in. All right, so we'll go to next and this screen you'll want to select on the simulation row, model sim Altera, and then select VHDL. Now you want to do this or else you will get errors in your simulations. We'll get to that later. Click next, click finish and let the loading bar do its thing. It might take a like 10 to 20 seconds or so on your computer. All right, so. Now we have Cordis Prime. This is an empty screen. Well, good thing here, you see something here? It says can't design, find design and see. Well, that's because we haven't added any files yet. So what we need to do is click on a, the little new button there or click on File New or do Control N and then find Block Diagram Slash Schematic File. Now what this will do is this will pull up a new empty schematic for us. So what we want to do is go ahead and save this using file save as. And you want to make sure you're in the root directory of your project. Select BDF and just name it tutorial BDF. Then go into click on hierarchy here, click on files, and you want to make sure that this is the top level entity. If you don't do that, when you compile, you might get errors saying it can't find your entity. So now let's talk about how do we make gates. There's a few ways to make gates. You can click on this symbol here, which is the symbol tool, or you can double click in the middle and it'll pull up the same window. So here, let's say that we want to make an equation uh, that's like an, an XOR gate. What is XOR? XOR is just A not B or with not AB. So let's make that. So first we need an OR gate. So you'll want to type in an OR2 and then move your mouse around and, uh, and you'll start to see this ghost. So if you click, it'll place the ghost and you can zoom in using the control uh, key and then move your mouse wheel or with the zoom tool here, just like that. So now that you know how to zoom, if you wanna drag your mouse around, simply use these scroll wheels here that's about it. Can't really do much else. You gotta use these scroll wheels here or use this mouse tool. You can move around like that. Now we have to do two other things. We have to do an AND gate twice. So click on the AND2 here. If you type in AND2, you'll get a two part AND gate. Click on repeat insert mode and then you can place it once and place it twice and then press escape to cancel doing that. So now I want to go ahead and connect these AND gates by clicking and dragging on the ends of these wires. Now we need two NOT gates, so let's do that same thing. We double click here, click NOT, press enter. Now we need to NOT A and we need to NOT B. All right, so now if we just drag our mouse over here, we can have wires coming out now of our circuit. Let's go ahead, let's extend these just a little bit so we can name our inputs. Just like that. I think I might move this a little bit more. So a nice thing about Cordis is that you can move and drag stuff and it doesn't mess up the wires. It won't like break connections, it'll try and drag things along. So now that we have 
our basic structure of an XOR gate, what we can do is we can click on the wire and then type in A, and here, type in B, and again, do A here, and again, B here, and we have our inputs. Now, if we want to name our outputs, we can go ahead, click here, type C. There we go. Now we have inputs and outputs, but it's not quite done. We still have to label the input and output pins of our circuit. How do we do that? Well, if you double click here, type in input, press enter, you can do it once, then double click and press enter again, we can do it twice. Now we'll do the same thing, we'll type in output. So all we have to do is double click here, type in A, type in B, and now we have inputs for A and B, and here we can type in C for output. Now there is a little bit of meaning to these uh, what are called net names. Basically anything that has the same name gets connected together. So really what's happening by naming this A and that A, it's basically saying that the wire that comes out of here comes all the way down invisibly and connects like that. But because that would be a lot of work and can get very messy for some circuits, we just type in A on both wires and Lo and behold, you'll get A in the net. So now we've got two inputs, an output, and A, B, A, B. How do we program it? Well, first, you're going to want to do pin assignments. And to do that, you need to compile it. So what you want to do is click on this third play button here, which is Start Analysis Synthesis. Now what that does, that does like a fast compile. That basically just checks to make sure that all of your gates are correct and then lets you change like the pins and stuff before you do the slow compile. So you just gotta click here, wait a few seconds. Now this step should only take about 15, 20 seconds on most computers. On slower computers it might take like 30 seconds or so, but you just wanna wait it out. There we go, 13 seconds. So now if we go into assignments, pin planner, we can see that we see A, B, and C here. Now, if you change any of your inputs, you're gonna to have to do another fast compile to see these changes here. So, how do we select a pin? Well, I have already pre-selected some pins in my circuit. Here, I chose H2 and K5 for my inputs. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here in this location box, type H2, and press Enter and it will automatically fill in pin underscore H2. You don't have to type that. Same thing for the other pin. Let's see, what was it? It was K5. So all I gotta do is click here, K5, bingo. Now let's look at the output pin. The output pin is gonna be K6. So K6, and we're done. So all you gotta do is close that out, come back to Cordis, do a full compile this time. So what this full compile is gonna do is take our design, take our pins, and then put it into a format that can fit onto our FPGA. Oh, but there's one more step we gotta do. Have to go to assignments, click device, device and pin options, and here in the unused pins tab, you're gonna to wanna to set as input try stated. You only have to do this once per project, but if you don't do it, then you could possibly get some accidental shorts. We don't want that. So now that we have our inputs tri-stated, unused pins tri-stated, all we gotta do is click start compilation here. This will do a slow file. Now this can take up to a few minutes on some computers. I think on mine it takes about 40 seconds. So go ahead, sit tight, maybe pause it, go follow along if you haven't been following along, and I'll still be here. Nice and wait. So in case you're wondering what the different steps are, the analysis and synthesis, all it does is it turns your circuit into a few equations. In this case, it probably figured out it was A, X, or B. The fitter looks at the design of the FPGA and it tries to place things in certain areas so that they're nice and close to each other. The assembler, we don't really have any programming here, so it doesn't do much during that step. Timing analysis just tries to make sure that everything uh, will work 
exactly on time when it needs to. That happens more in clocking situations. And netless writer, that does some more stuff related to the equations. So now that we are compiled, what we can do is click on this little diamond here. This is the programmer tool. So you want to click that. And you'll come up to a file that looks like this, or a window that looks like this. Now, if in the top corner you see here, no hardware selected, what you need to do is click on the hardware setup button right there, and then click this drop down, and you'll see your blaster here, as long as you have it plugged in and you installed the driver. If you don't see it here, you either didn't install the driver or you have it plugged into a USB hub or you're running it through a VM. So Portis is pretty picky. Uh, make sure that you don't have the programmer plugged into a USB hub. Make sure it's plugged directly into the computer. Uh, dongles like USB-C to USB-A dongles can cause it to not be shown as well. If you're running Windows through a VM to run Cordis, that can cause issues as well. So definitely, if any of those reasons are on your list of things of why it's not showing up, get that fixed. So click the blaster, click close, and now you can see here we are going to program a .sof file onto our board. And there's two types of files. A .sof file is volatile memory. So when you program it, it'll just be there until you turn it off. And as soon as you turn it off, uh, as in pull the power out of the FPGA, it'll go away. And you'll have to reprogram it again when you turn it back on. Now, if you want to have it be there permanently, what you need to do is click on Add File, click Output Files, and select this POF here, and then remove the SOF. Now, the POF will stay there permanently, but it takes a lot longer to program. It takes about a minute to program. When you do program, you're going to want to check the program slash configure checkbox and the verify, verify checkbox. But because I don't want to waste a minute of your guys' time programming this, I'm going to delete this, add a file, and I'm going to add the SOF back in. For this, you just want to check the program and configure and click start. So you'll see in about one second, it'll program to 100% successful. If you don't see that, you want to make sure of a few things. First, you want to make sure that you have your programmer plugged in. That's a good step. And then you want to make sure that you have this red ribbon cable connected from the blaster to the FPGA. Now, the important thing is that this wire comes away from the board. If it's going the other direction, it's not going to work. Same with over here. You want it to go away from the board, not going over. So now it's programmed to the board. Then you want to make a, a circuit for it to test it. Well, here you can see my circuit I've made for it. I have both my 3.3 volts plugged into power, both my grounds plugged into ground. I've got this power coming into the SIP resistor. I've got switch bank and two ground wires to form two pull-up switches. Then I have the output of these pull-up switches going into two places. I have them going into the input pins that we selected earlier, and I have it going into two LEDs so we could see what the output is. Then finally, I have our C coming out of pin K6, going into an LED with a 100 ohm resistor. And so this is an XOR gate, and so whenever an XOR gate is on, that means that the two inputs are different. And so here you can see that A here is going to be high, and B here is going to be low. And they're different, therefore we're outputting a signal. So we know, we know it works. You'll want to test all four combinations on your board. Uh, here you don't really have to save any changes, but it doesn't hurt to. So now that we have a BDF, let's see how to make a VHDL file. So first, you're going to want to click New, then click VHDL file. Click OK. Now I have already prepared some code, just like this, but you're going to want to pause and type this out for yourself. Uh, maybe look in the notes and see what each part of this means. That's not for this uh, episode of a tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to save this as the same name. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you anyways and show you what happens. You want to make sure it's in the root of uh, the root directory of your project. That, and that's where you see the DB file, the output file, simulation. That's the root directory. If you save it anywhere else, it just doesn't like working. So, oops, wrong button. 
There we go. Save. Now we have two files here. Now if I click compile, it's going to do the BDF because this is actually the top level entity. If I click hierarchy here, you can see the BDF is the top level entity. So what I need to do is do that same thing we did in the beginning again. Right click here, click as set as top level entity. Now when I compile it, I'm going to get an error. It's not going to like the fact that there's two things in here, name, tutorial. So what I'm going to do is once I get this error, you'll see it in a second. Oh, it's actually compiling. Um, normally it actually errors when you do this. But for some reason, the software is being like this today. If you do get that error, I'll show you how to fix it. All you gotta do is right click and click remove file from project. And all that'll do is it'll just remove it from the project. It won't delete it. And to add it back in, all you have to do is right click here, click add remove files, add all, and it'll add it right back in. So once you have that VHD file right there, you can see there's our code. All you gotta do is compile it again and program. So let's say I wanna do the POF this time. So I would delete this, click add file, click output files and find the POF. Click program and verify and click start. Now another common error, error you might get here is if you try and do both the, the POF and the SOF at the same time. If you do both at the same time, it just says failed, doesn't say any error. So you wanna make sure that you get rid of both of them and then add the POF or the SOF. Now here you can see it was 100% successful, but it took a lot longer. But there you go. That's how you make a Cordis project, make a few simple equations, and then program it to your board in BDF and VHDL. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day.